Yash, I like, I'd rather say, like, what happens when we start to uh, spiritually awaken? You see, that has like a, some connotations associated with it, meaning like it's a process, like there's no end. When you say, what's it like to have a spiritual awakening? Or what's it like to be enlightened? That has like a one and you're done type thing to it. And that's a big problem I've noticed in uh, a lot of people who are on the path in my previous self also. Because my mind would paint this picture somehow, abstract or, or not. And you got all these books that, that, that reinforce that. To have this idea, this checklist that you got to go down. And then it's like, oh, that's awakening. Got to be, <laughs> I left a comment on uh, like some months ago because it was funny. Um, I don't remember the question. Something, how do you know, yeah, you're awake or something. I couldn't help it. So I said, you have to be, you have to experience, I'm, I don't remember what I said, but something like this. You got to experience peace 98% of, of your 24 hours. And that peace has to be at at least 400 hertz of intensity. Then you know you're awake. So I'm making fun because the mind has this structure. That's why I like to call it out. I did this in my, my beginning videos like that I made like five months ago. I don't know how many people watch those. I'm like, I'm like, what is this awakening? What is it? Is it tangible? And who, who's going to tell you what it is? Are you going to tell yourself what it is? Who's telling you what it is? Your mind? Does your mind know what it is? When do you cross over the line of being, <laughs> you're not awake and then you cross over into awakening? When's that, when's that, where's that line at? And what does it look like? Now we can say, yeah, you know, awakening, people who are awake, <clears throat> they're a little, they're more, um, their mind's more quiet. They have a sense of uh, more peace, um, uh, unconditional love for other people. That's automatic. You're not practicing it. Because you automatically start to see yourself in others. It's like you don't want to treat your own self bad. But sometimes you might be used as a karmic instrument. <laughs> we don't know. Flexibility. It's a big spiritual principle that a lot of spiritual aspirants don't have. Um, things like that. Like, yeah, those, those are, are qualities that one who's more awake spiritually are going to manifest. It's just it's what it is. You're not going <clears> to... <throat> You're not going to be on the highway and somebody cuts you off. You're not going to, you're not going to reach under your seat and get a gun and then go follow them. Just don't do that, you know. But you're not trying to not do it. It's not like you want to, but then you don't know. You just somehow you don't, you don't do that. So, but what? When does it become an awakening level? How quiet does your mind got to be? How many thoughts are you allowed per day? to where it's like okay now I'm awake so introspect catch all that out and demystify this whole concept of awakening I make these videos because I can feel there's a balance like God wants me to make these videos because God's running this whole show duality non-duality so when things get out of balance he he appoints certain characters that he plays in to kind of address and make some balance because um, I remember that there was a comment a guy he said him and his friend they when they talk like they'll they'll make fun of the non-dual oaks I stole that term from Silver Lake uh, it's like you know like let me, let me give you an example because that's how I do it too that's my humor just make fun of stuff that's 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 so over overly used and, and exaggerated you know it's like you feel a nice sense of balance um, so let's say me and a friend are walking down the street he trips and falls in a manhole and he like hurt his leg he's like help me I'm like help who man why are you identify like what are you talking about? There's no you, there's no hole, and there's nobody to help you. See? I'm not gonna say that. 
but that's a way like we'll, we'll we we do funny stuff like that not i wouldn't do that if he fell in a manhole because that might hurt but like if he whatever just any little things that are a little more little that you can feel it's appropriate you can say that it, it actually brings you out brings you out of of the maya or the duality that can take place in that moment you think an awakened person never feels and <laughs> it just doesn't happen if an awakened person's walking down the road and somebody somebody uh well let's give an extreme example somebody comes up and they you know give me your money I think the awakens us bless you my son no he's gonna react he's gonna, whoa okay uh okay uh, or if somebody just starts like somebody you love, who you appreciate, maybe they heard some gossip or hearsay, and then they take it to be true. This is another thing. Don't believe any. Nobody can be trusted if if they're super mind identified. Okay, they just can't. They're not stable. So it's amazing how somebody can tell somebody something. Just because they're their friend, they think that they're giving them a 100% unbiased report of what happened. It's like, no, man. You ever heard that saying, there's three sides to every story? Yours, mine, and the actual truth. Yeah. So let's say somebody that you, your, I don't know, your daughter, your younger sister, they revered you. You had a good relationship. They hear something that maybe you, you know, abuse some student maybe they have a picture too of you and the student and then and then they're like he abused her though or him or whatever and then the the person they're telling they believe it somehow and then they come to you they're like how could you do that man like what the hell like what are you doing like you're fake you think that person that their teacher's not going to feel something they're going to feel sad or they're going to feel some you know like we don't stop being a human being even when we recognize our, our true spiritual nature we become better at playing the role of a human being our virtual reality equipment they get upgraded upgraded in the sense that we realize it's virtual virtual reality equipment whereas the average zombie they put on the equipment and they just think this is what they are this body and everything and you know they they don't have any <coughs> awareness of their true essence their consciousness that which is going to um, survive the bat the death of this virtual reality equipment uh, so what's a spiritual awakening and then you got books you get, you got books where yeah it just keeps getting better They'll say, you got to be able to make your body 10 times bigger than what it is. Or you got to be able to reduce it by 10 times. Or you got to be able to levitate. Or you got to be able to whatever. They got different stages. Somebody left me a comment. He was, he's read something. There's, I guess, 15, 15 stages. He's like, you're in number eight, bro. I'm like... <laughs> So careful, careful how the mind hijacks the whole spiritual practices and realms and concepts and uses it for its own purpose. It, 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 it delays the recognition of your true self because it says if you don't meet this criteria, you're probably not awake. A lot of these things, making yourself too big or eight times smaller or being breatharian or levitating or manifesting these are cities these are special powers you can say that uh, it's up to the divine if it wants to manifest through a, f a certain form like that okay but there's a lot of a lot of reports of you can say fallen angels who receive some powers usually they're yogis so if you've been spending lifetimes on cultivating this energy through bandhas and mudras and pranayama you're going to have some cities because you're going to start to be able to manipulate with the, the subtle uh, elements, the earth, water, air, fire, air, ether. So you're going to, you, there's going to be some powers in that. That don't equal awakening though. 
And um, if God wants to manifest one of those powers through you, okay, don't be attached to it though. It's like if God wants to manifest through your form that you be what's deemed as collectively attractive, okay, but don't identify with it. Don't use it to try to milk attention. And, and you see, that's when the ego will hijack some gift from God, which God operates through laws of karma. Everything can be explained through karma. It's not like God's up there and he's like, you look good, you look ugly, you can levitate, you can't. No, it's not like that. So accept the play of life. But none of those things are indicators that you're awake. There can be some simple village person, woman, totally awake, doesn't even know anything about awakening, stays home, cooks, takes care of the kids, cleans, and, and is very happy. So it can look like that. Or there can be an awakened being who can, you know, you can read autobiography of a yogi because he gives a lot of... Uh, illustrative examples of <clears throat> some of these awakened yogis who have cities who have powers the one guy they locked him up in jail and he was like 300 pounds but he he kept flying out of jail would wave to the guards and he'd go back in <laughs> or the guy at the beginning of his book where i think some police <laughs> they were in the jungle they thought he was somebody that killed somebody and they cut his arm off and he went into the junk he went into the, oh, then the cop apologized. He's like, oh, man, you're the wrong guy. He says, it's all good. Come back tomorrow, I'll show you. Came back tomorrow, he materialized an arm. That doesn't mean, I feel he's awake, but he's not awake because he can do that. He's awake because he's recognized his true nature. But there's others who can't do that, but they're still awake if they recognize their true nature. So what's the... What's the determination if you're awake? Get rid of that concept. Don't think about it. You live, you live according to inner sanction as best as you can every day. You have no choice anyway. Let that keep evolving. And you get to where this idea of am I awake or, or I am awake or I'm not awake, that dissolves. That's mind. You're not in it. You don't care anymore. It's like leave me alone. This is, this is nice. It's a nice place to be in. And you keep going like that. You just keep uh, spiraling upward or inward. This is what you do. All right. See you.